Hello folks and welcome to something a little bit different here on the channel today. Today we are going to be talking about one of the most common topics that we get questions about from people. We're going to be having a chat about autism and puberty. As you'll know, Andy is currently 13 years old. His 14th birthday is in July. He's very much in this whole puberty thing. He's... um. I mean, he's not, obviously his voice hasn't broken yet and he's not shaving and stuff like that. But there is lots of other stuff that we have noticed. Um, for example, he's starting to spend a lot more time alone in his bedroom. He just wants to be on his own a little bit more. Even if we go all the way back to sort of this time last year when we were first getting him the medication for anxiety, the fluoxetine that he takes every day, the main the main trigger for us wanting to get some medication for him partly it was the whole refusing school thing but the refusing school thing we are still convinced has a lot to do with the fact that he was starting to get different hormones and whatnot going on in his body he was just starting to be a lot more confrontational a lot more argumentative and it was a there was a, a big step change between how he was when he was at primary school and he was just a lovely compliant little boy who did as he was asked and you know very similar to how he is now the majority of the time but then around about Christmas of year seven for him so that would have been when he was about 11 and a half it was like a switch was flicked and he just changed and we started getting the more regular meltdowns we started getting it started to become impossible to get him to do what we were asking him to do and a, a year went on after that point before we even started the vlog. You joined us after a year of that as we were just sort of coming to the end of it and starting to explore solutions. But there was a good year, year and a half where he was really, really difficult to be around. And we at the time, and the professionals have backed us up on this, attributed a lot of that towards early stages of puberty. And it's something that he's dealing with all the time and we'll be dealing with for the next few years. And we've got all the fun of... Um, of the birds and the bees to come and figuring out what to do about shaving because you've seen him how he is when we try and just cut the hair on his head which we do once a year because he finds it such a traumatic experience I don't quite know how we're going to shave him or teach him to shave every day that's a big worry that we've got I think he's probably just going to have a beard and maybe the the haircut with the clippers will become a all over the top of the head, then round on the face as well. Just give him a number one all over or number two all over or whatever blade he has and just even the beard out with the hair. And I don't know what other solution there is. And there's lots of other stuff that we probably haven't even thought of yet. His voice is going to break at some point as well. People often ask about his voice. It's just the way his voice is at the moment, but sooner or later... His voice is going to break. But this video isn't just me sat here talking at you about autism and puberty. I put out on our YouTube channel community page and on the Facebook page and on Twitter all over the last 24 hours or so, letting you know we're going to be doing an autism and puberty Q&A. Loads and loads and loads of you got in touch. I think at the most recent count, we had about 70 questions across the across the three platforms. So we obviously can't answer them all. We were quite strict with it. So we're only going to be answering questions about this topic for this Q&A. It's going to be very focused in on autism and puberty. So anything that wasn't about this was just disregarded straight away. But there was still far more questions than we could possibly answer in a reasonable length video. So apologies if we don't get to your question. Um, there are a lot of similar questions. And where we've had similar ones, we've just picked one that will lead to the same sort of answer so not everybody's going to get their question answered but we do still have quite a lot to get through so let's jump straight into the questions and uh, hopefully figure some stuff out together as we go so first one are you worried about meltdowns in public now Andy's getting older and um, meaning one day he'll look more like a man and be received differently if he strips down yeah I am really worried about that it was I think the last time he completely stripped naked in public, we even named a video after it. It was in the it was in the co-op supermarket, and he just didn't want to be there, and he took off all his clothes. This is going back like two years now, and at the time he looked like an eleven-year-old boy. But if he was to do that, age sixteen, with a sixteen-year-old boy's body and pubic hair, and you know, I think the reaction is going to be very different 
from other people to that's just an 11 year old i mean most people who are walking past that probably don't understand what autism is they're just looking at it for face value so it was okay so that's just an 11 year old boy playing up you get that sometimes they're bad parents aren't they Phew, bad bad parents and the heat is all on us if he does that and he looks like a man then the heat is on him that's then a man getting naked in a supermarket that's when people are phoning the police that's when people are attacking him and yeah it's a major major fear and fingers crossed it's not something that he's done for a long long time he understands that that's not something he can do now so as long as we can keep on top of the medication the meltdowns the anxiety fingers crossed it will never be something that comes up but it's always there in the back of our our minds because there have been so many times in the past where he's dropped the floor and pulled his trousers off as part of a meltdown and he, he is now getting to the point where he just can't do that without it causing serious consequences does andy get any lessons in school about puberty and life skills in that area he they don't have because he's at a special school they don't have the traditional sort of in year seven you get given condoms and tampons and you know the sort of stuff that you get in a normal secondary school so he's not had that it is something that they address individually tailored to the students when it becomes appropriate so if they notice that Andy starts running off to the toilet and playing with himself then they'll address that but they're not going to they're not going to talk to him about that before it happens is my understanding of it and um, equally with stuff like that i mean i read some quite I, I say scary advice online, but not scary because, oh, it's t- just thing, something that would make me feel really uncomfortable doing that I then need to get over. But there was some, some websites talking about this where we should be, for example, teaching him how to masturbate. And I, I don't even know. I don't even know how we do that. I don't even know if we should do that. But, you know, he's, he's going to be a 14-year-old kid. 14 year old kids do that so we need to make sure he's doing it safely and hygienically and yeah that's even more of a so i'm looking forward to that even less than i am shaving because the first time we notice a little surprise parcel in his bed what i mean i can't even begin to think what we do to resolve that do you think Andy is aware of the changes happening to him right now? No, I think Andy, as far as Andy is concerned, Andy is just Andy. He's being Andy. The world might be changing around him, but he always stays the same. And I think that's pretty much how his mind works with that. So even if his attitudes to things and his his feelings about things change and his body changes, I think in his mind, and I could be wrong about this, but I think in his mind, it's everything else changing and he's staying constant, even if that's not actually what's happened. Do you think Andy going through puberty makes it easier to manage him or harder? Absolutely harder at the moment. I think when we're at the other side of it, we are hopeful that things will become easier because when the medication is on point, when everything is working, when he's calm, he is much easier to reason with and communicate with now than he was a year ago, than he was two years ago, than he was three years ago, even before the meltdowns and the the difficult behaviour started it was still very difficult to have a conversation with him. Whereas, for example, this morning, I've said, look, Andy, I want to go out and film some stuff today. What do you want to go and film? He wants to go and film a church. Okay, well, let's go, should we go to the cathedral? We can do the lifts as well while we're there. And he said, yeah, he wants to do that. He also wants to go to WH Smith's to film the tills. And he's we're having a conversation about what he wants to do today. And I don't know if that's puberty or just general maturity or just as his brain is developing or as the medication starts to work but it's much easier to have a conversation with him when he's calm but if he's off his medication for a couple of days like there was over the last week or so there's been times where we've not been here so his his grand's been looking after him or um, he's been at his respite place and we're not entirely sure that he's been getting the same medic well that he's been getting his medication in the same doses at the same times and we noticed certainly when we were in Nottingham on Monday and when we were in Boston the day we picked him up from respite as well both those days he was very very edgy and became quite difficult to manage has he asked any questions or is he not at that stage yet I don't I don't imagine he's going to ask any I can't imagine him asking a question I think he'll just do what he does and he'll do what he feel, thinks feels right and it the, the the emphasis will then be on us to explain to him whether that's what he should or shouldn't be doing I can't imagine a scenario where he comes up to him and says mum dad I've got hair on my lip what's this 
I just, I don't see it. This one was an interesting one. I was wondering, due to the fact that Andy doesn't like change, would you ever consider hormone blocking to slow down or even stop puberty? There's a few families that have done this in America. I was just curious. I don't, I just can't imagine that we would do that. It, it feels, and I I mean, hand, hands in the air straight away. I know absolutely nothing about this. So it might be considered a really good thing to do for kids like Andy. But for me, looking at that as an instant reaction, I would say, no, why would you take that part of life away from him? We don't want to keep him as a kid forever. Our goal for Andy and our goal for Andy has always been we want him to live as full and as independent a life as possible. There was another question I don't think I've put on my list where someone said, do you ever see him having a family when he's older? And if he just becomes a 25 version of 13-year-old Andy, probably not. But we have no idea if that's how he's going to develop over the next five years, 10 years, 15 years. He might have a completely functional and independent adult life and get married and have kids and be completely happy. And by blocking his hormones and keeping him a kid forever and stopping him developing through puberty, we're taking that away as an option. Do I think it's likely that he's going to be fully independent and uh, go and get a, a job and have a family and get married? I would say probably not. But it's absolutely not impossible, and I would never close that door to him. Lots of people asking the same sort of things of, does he know what puberty is? I don't think he does. If he does, it's not something he's capable of communicating with us at this stage. What would it be like trying to transition into putting deodorant on him and washing him more often? Luckily, that's something that we've always done. He has a bath every day. It's part of his bedtime routine. I don't know that he needs to bath more often than once a day. I, I only have one shower a day. So I think he's probably all right with bathing once a day like he always has. And he's been wearing deodorant for years because he likes the sensation of it touching his skin. So he has spray deodorant that he's been wearing for at least the last three or four years, long before he actually needed it because he saw us using it. He showed an interest. And, you know, as you do when your kids show an interest in something, you might squirt a little bit on him to mess around and play. People do that, don't they? And... He liked it, so he, you know, it's a good habit to get him into. So now, when he's getting dressed in the morning, he has a squirt under each armpit, and he likes it. So that's that's not going to be an issue. How far into detail are you going to go about the birds and the bees? Are you going to play it safe and play it a year at a time? All we can do, I think, with that is just take it, take it as it comes, figure things out as we go along. We, you know, we're we're in a situation where we we can't sit down and have. A conversation with him about an appropriate way to cross the road because he won't engage in that conversation so if we can't teach him to cross the road safely I don't think we can teach him about sex safely at the moment and that's not to say we'll never have the conversations that's not to say it's something we're gonna try and protect him and keep him away from but it's stuff that we'll deal with it as and when the time comes if we notice him looking at looking at rude pictures on his iPad and touching himself, then we'll have to have conversations about where it's appropriate to do that, what it's appropriate to do. And yeah, it's going to be really, really, really difficult. And I imagine a lot of that probably won't make it on the channel because that's like super private. But yeah, no idea at this stage. We will figure it out as we go along, just like we have everything else. Is there any real change between puberty and smaller child autism? So I think I think this question is asking, do we expect his autism symptoms to change as he moves from being a child to an adolescent to an adult? And I don't know if expect is the right word, but we see a lot of examples of people who... Uh, uh, one of the one of the more common comments we get from people is, I was just like Andy when I was his age, or my brother was just like Andy when I was his age, but now I'm leaving this comment on a YouTube video or now he works as a bus driver or, you know, whatever else. So we we don't know if that's likely to happen. We don't know if they're the exceptions. We don't know if they're exaggerations. We don't know if people are just sort of projecting themselves or their family onto Andy because he's the closest thing to them they see on the internet. But in actual fact, his symptoms are very different. But we, as any parent would, have that hope that he might develop more independence. He might understand what danger is. He might 
who knows who knows what might happen but everyone has these dreams for their kids and we would we would love for him to be independent and happy and whatever independent and happy looks like for Andy then we hope he develops towards that over the next five years 10 years 20 years to the point where he can look back when he's my age when he's 35 and say yeah I'm pretty happy with how things have turned out it would be great if he can have that thought at the moment I don't know that he can he might be able to then um, and then last one, I realise I've not done this in a particularly logical order. I've kind of done them as the order that I found. I'm scrolling through all of the pages that I've got open. How do you think Andy will cope with getting spots? Spots are a real, real problem. We had, I don't know, I will try and drop in a clip from a previous video where Andy picks at spots and it became a real problem just over a year ago I think where he had a spot on his face and he picked at it and it got infected and then he picked at the infection and it got worse and he kept picking at it and it got to the point where there was just this big angry blotchy mess across one side of his face that all just started with him picking at a spot because that's a spot it's not supposed to be there I'll pick at it and he does it anytime he gets a spot we did get some pretty heavy duty I think it was steroid cream that got rid of that in the end and it's just something we're going to have to do we'll, we'll tell him not to but tying into the fact he's spending more time alone in his bedroom now. We're obviously keeping an eye on him. We, do, we stick our head around the door. We make sure he's not doing anything he shouldn't do. We check what he's watching on his iPad. Um, we check he's not going back to smearing, which was the big issue that stopped him being allowed to go in his bedroom before because he would go up there and basically poo into his hands or wee on the floor. We check he's, he's not doing any of that. It's all positive stuff. Um, so we're checking in on him regularly. But obviously all we can do when we're checking in is make sure he's not picking a spot at that moment. And he's smart. He'll know. He knows he's not supposed to do it. So if he hears us coming, he won't do it. And people have said, well, why can't you put a camera on him? Or put a camera in his bedroom. And I know a lot of parents do that with their kids with autism. And it's not something we're comfortable doing because I think everybody's entitled to their privacy. And it goes into that whole independence thing. We want him to be able to have some time on his own away from us where he doesn't have to worry about us spying on him. But you have to balance that with making sure that he's safe and it is super difficult. And I say this now and in six months time there might be a camera in his room or in six months time he might not be allowed in his room on his own anymore. Who knows? But it is there's only so much you can do to stop him picking at spots because he has that time away from us where he can pick at spots. Where do you draw the line? And it's the constant thing that we have as a family of trying to work out where those lines should be. And we know that we've not got it right at the moment. We probably never will get it 100% right, but we always try and improve it. And I don't think we do too bad a job at that. But we are going to end things there for today's video. If you have any more questions about autism and puberty that you don't think have been covered in this video, please feel free to leave them down in the comments. I am absolutely up for doing a part two in this a month or two down the line if there's more stuff that we could discuss or if there's any major developments with Andy. Also, let me know what you think about this type of video. I know it's not a typical vlog, but... The reason we haven't done a typical vlog today, or yesterday in fact, because I'm recording this the morning it comes out rather than the day before like I normally would, is because Andy was just exhausted. He'd been out and about, just, I mean, and Anna was as well, to be honest. We were all pretty tired and weren't really up for doing anything yesterday because we'd had eight days really where we'd been out and about doing something every single day. Andy in particular hadn't had his time alone just to chill just to watch cbb's just to watch his youtube videos and he literally spent almost all of yesterday just sat in his bedroom on his ipad watching videos and he just seems so much happier and calmer now than he was on thursday because he had the opportunity to do that and he's now ready to go out and about again today but sometimes there will be days where we can't do an exciting vlog where we're going to a convention or we're taking Andy to the churches or whatever else we might be doing or the seaside or all the other stuff that we've done recently sometimes there'll be days where we're just sat around in our pajamas not really doing a lot and I think on those days rather than doing a terrible video of here we are sat in our pajamas we'll see if we're still sat in them later doing something like this probably has some value for the channel i think so let me know your thoughts on that i could be wrong you might want the pajama vlogs but let me know down in the comments if you have enjoyed this please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for us subscribe to the channel for more daily vlogs and thank you very much for watching